Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are greatly blessed. And I pray that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, today what I want to do is talk about, and it's a long title, is what do I say when I'm asking God for something? What do I say when I'm asking God for something? Sometimes people say to me all the time, that I'm not sure what to say. Well, I want to talk about that today. Well, I recently got invited to a birthday party. It's of someone I haven't known really that, very, that long. There was a few hundred people at this birthday party and it was just really well done, really well organised. It was just a great, it was a great thing to be at. To be honest with you, I felt somewhat privileged to have even been asked to be there. I didn't know many people that were there. It was just great. Well, one of the things that I love at, at, at parties and uh, birthday parties and at weddings is I have come to really enjoy speeches. And partic- but a particular type of speech. You hear some people say, I oh, just want, let's get the speeches over and done with, as if it's boring someone. But if you listen to a good speech, if you listen to a speech in those environments, those speeches are saying something about a whole number of people that are there. They're giving you a look into a person, but also they're giving you a look into the person that speaks. And when it's in the context of family, they're allowing you to actually have a look in, into that family themselves. And the interesting thing is that the person who's being talked about, they have to be prepared to allow it to happen as well as happened at this birthday party. Well, we ate this fantastic meal. I sat surrounded by people, none of whom I particularly knew, but were excellent. We had wonderful conversation, Rosemary and I, and we had a, it was just wonderful. And then all of a sudden after the meal, had been had. The the MC for the evening, he invited up this gentleman's wife and this gentleman's two daughters, and they proceeded to give a speech that 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 I pray they recorded so that in years to come they can remember all that they said in the way that they said it. See, when they started, they said, This is who he is. Uh, his wife said, This is who he is. His two daughters said, this is who he is. And as, they, and as they reflected on his life and who he was and the things he's done, all of a sudden it fills out the picture of who he is. But also what it does is it figure, fills out the picture of the effect that he's had upon them. And, and it's just this, it was just this amazing insight that you begin to, to see and And effectively, when they were speaking, they were saying to him, this is who you are. This is what you have done. When Rosemary and I got in the car later on that evening, Rosemary said to me, me, isn't his wife magnificent? You know, isn't she just magnificent? You know, the way she spoke, because a number of times she used his name and she said, this is who you are. This is, this is, this is the character of the man you, you are. This, you, you are hardworking. You're a man of faith. You're a man who's a good father. You're a good husband. You're a good friend. And, and, and for me, who haven't known them that long, it filled out so many other of, of the pictures. And people around me, it was, it was the same. What they said to him is, this is what you've done for us. This is what you have done for us. His daughters spoke beautifully about, about the man that he is and how as a father they, that, that he had affected them. And, 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 and he should be so proud for who they are and, and, the, way, and the way they were. Uh, they were saying, this is the effect that you've had on us. And as, and as I listened, I couldn't help but think in my mind, what would my children say? What would my wife say? I'm sure everyone in the room had that fleeting thought go through their mind. I'm sure everybody in the room were just wowed by the love that there clearly was in this relatively small family, mum, dad, couple of kids. And, and, and it was just amazing. And, 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 and there constantly was this whole idea of, of this is who we are because 
of you. And what they probably didn't realise is that the ingredients of prayer were there right in the things that they were saying that night. That there were the ingredients of what a great prayer to our God who's Father in heaven was in what in the things that they were doing. See, many of us, we get stuck, don't we? We get stuck when it comes to prayer and it gets stuck when it comes to asking God for things. And, and, and so often people get stuck in terms of prayer because uh, they're not sure what to say. They're not sure what the right and acceptable things to say are. If you've ever been with a group of people and they say, well, let's pray, it doesn't take long a lot of the time to, get, to just get to God, will you do this and will you do this and will you do this and will you do this? And that's the full extent of it. Any relationships that's just about asking for things isn't a really high quality relationship, is it? See, what they constantly did is they talked about their dad, as his wife talked about him as a husband. What they constantly did was they kept declaring to him and to everybody in their hearing and to themselves, this is who you are and you are a fine man. You're a good man. They didn't have to come along and say, you're a very good man because there's a purity when you just say, you're a good man. Like when you say, you are good. In the Scriptures, we read in the Scriptures, so often it doesn't say you're very good or you're magnificently good or you're this good. It just is, there's a purity to the word good and it's like, it's, it's enough, it's more than enough. And what they said to their father is, this is who You are. And to all of us, there was a sense of, wow, we are in the presence of a man who has lived a good life and is a man that is a good man. Well, when we come to God, when we come to God and we come with our needs, we, in all of us, we have to think about how are we going to talk to God? Because it isn't a particularly healthy relationship of all we do is ever just say, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me. That, that's not a personal relationship. That's not a healthy relationship. A mature relationship is something more than even that. My, uh, my second oldest granddaughter, her name is Charlotte, and she's beautiful. She's 12. And uh, a little while ago, uh, she was... Uh, she, she, was, uh, uh, she was aware that I've got a box at home that I call, well, where for I'm from, the lolly box or, or in other places you, you'd call it a candy box or uh, if you're in England, you'd call it a sweet box. Different people have different names, but it's just loaded with all sorts of different candy, lolly, sweets. And she came to me on this particular day. I was sitting in, my, in the front room of my house. I was reading something. And she came up to me and she calls me Pa and she said to me, Pa, I love you, Pa. And I thought, oh, that's nice. You know, she was visiting. I love you, Pa. And and, and I did think just by the way she said it, I went, oh, that's lovely. But it just seemed a bit out there. And then all of a sudden after a pause, she looked at me and she said, can I have have some lollies, Pa? The reason she'd come to say to me, you know, uh, I love you, Pa, is because she wanted something. Well, when we come to God, we can't come to God like that, even though I smiled and guess what? I went and got the lolly box and I gave her some candy. I did. When we come to God, we have to come with a more mature view that we grow in over time and over time and over time. And I want to have a look at a passage of Scripture from the book of Ephesians where Paul is speaking to this little community of people in a place called Ephesus. And, and, if you, and if you read in my Bible, the very heading of the Bible says, prayer for the readers, prayer for the readers. Paul, Paul prays this prayer for everybody who's going to read this. And, and you will see in this passage of Scripture what I saw at the party the other day in the speeches. And, and, it, and it says this in chapter 3, Verse 14, it says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth 
takes its name. He starts by, he says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven on earth takes its name. What Paul immediately comes along and Paul mixes two things right through this prayer. He mixes who God is with whom he's praying for and who he is. We see three ingredients in the prayer. God, who he's praying for, and himself. And, 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 that, and that what he begins to talk about is the greatness and the wonder of God, the centrality of God. And then because of the centrality of God, who God made the person that's being prayed for, who, because of who God is and the magnificence of God, the fact that the person that's being prayed for, the only way that those things will be achieved in their life is if God does the work. In other words, Paul comes along and he says, I'm going to pray to the Father for you because it's God who will do. See, when I was younger, there was part of me that thought I can convince God to hear my prayer by the things that I said or the, or, or the fact that I said the right things. And, it, and it's true that we need to pray maturely, that's for sure. But it's God who does. It's God who does. So have a look at this. It says, so... For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. He says, I'm bowing before God, from whom every family in heaven on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant that you be strengthened in your inner being with power through His Spirit. Look at this. He says, I pray that according to the riches of His glory. It's not... It's not in keeping with what he has done. When I was younger, I used to think to myself, well, if I'm a good boy, God will answer my prayers as if if it's dependent upon me. Paul doesn't say that. Paul says the answer to your prayers is dependent upon God. It's not dependent upon you. It's not dependent on who you are. That will, will cause you to be blessed or for God to work or for God to answer your prayer. Just like as this family, when they honoured this man, their father, their husband, they weren't thinking, well, I will, I will say these things because then I will be thought well. This father loved them because he was the father. He was the husband. He loved them. And in the same way, we see this in God. In the same way we see this in God is that God grants because he loves because He is the Father. It's not dependent on your prayer and it's not dependent on the person or the quality of the person in terms of their lifestyle and how they're living, whether God blesses them or God works in them. God does because God is. And and Paul comes along and he says, it's all about God. He says, I pray that according to the riches of His glory, according to His riches, which think about it, God's riches are indescribable, unlimited. He may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through His Spirit. So what he's even saying is it's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, that will even do these things in you and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. What Paul is saying, it's all about God. When we come to God to ask God to bless us, when we come to God to ask Him to work in our life, when we come to God, it's not about your prayer. It's not about you. It's not about the person being prayed for. It's about God. It's about God Himself. And so these three ingredients of God, the person praying and the person being prayed for, they're all there. But what's the most important? The most important is the fact that it's God and God's love and God, that God, fact that God wants to root and ground every one of us in His love, in His life, in who He is. Our prayers matter, but God matters more than even our prayer. And so it goes on and it says in verse 18, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. 
Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. See, he, Paul says when praying for them, I pray that you would be filled according to what God has done, who, who God is to the identity, the character, the nature of God. I pray that you would know that, the length, the breadth, the height, the depth, that you would know God because it is God that is central to everything about our life. It is God who has the longer term plan in terms of who's calling us to Him. It is about God who is calling us into His life. Paul writes a prayer that says the three, ing- the three participants in this prayer, God, me, the person, those of you I'm praying for, the most essential part of it is God. He turns to Him and He looks to God. From time to time, I... I, I, I occasionally get to talk to people around the world who, who somehow have connected with our ministry. Maybe I've spoken to you. I, uh, there are so many I don't actually, in terms of proportion to the number, I don't speak to that many, but I speak to some. A- and I have got into the habit of saying to people at the end, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? And many people say to me before I pray, some not, but many people say, no one's ever said a prayer for me. No one's, no one's ever said a prayer for me like you're about to say a prayer for me now. I always smile because they're not even sure what I'm going to say. And, and, and the thing that I've learned about praying for people who are in need, people who are ill, people who have financial situations they're struggling with, people who have relational difficulties, uh, people who who you just want well for. You just want God to bless and for life to be good. The thing that I've learned is it's never about me. The actual secret of great prayer is to get out of the way of the prayer, is to get out of the way and not make yourself the focus of it. It's because when you're praying for someone and they're here and there's, there's God, What you're trying to do is fade into the background because what you want them to do is to have this encounter with the presence of God because there's not much, oh, I can't do anything for people. And so in a sense, when you pray for people, it's to step out of the picture so that just two are left, the person you're praying for and the person being prayed for. And and, and, and when I have prayed for people, if this makes sense, I have tried to pray the very best prayer that I know how to pray. And that is a prayer that that this person being prayed for would come to know and experience the love and the power and the affection and the greatness of God. Because in the end of the day, it's all about God. It's all about God being with us. Here's a few things to remember that you might want to remember about prayer when you pray. It's number one, it's this. Remember when you say your prayer, God is looking at your heart. God is looking at your heart. When you, when you pray for someone, all these people we, we, in, in this series called Pray for Someone You Love, as we've prayed for thousands and thousands of people all over the world, that people continue to keep sending in names to have prayed for. Remember, God, when God is looking at your heart. If you're a mum or a dad, God sees your love for your grandchildren and your children. God sees that. If you're a friend of someone that you deeply love, God sees your heart. If you're a spouse, God sees your heart. Remember, it's God sees the intention. Because sometimes, I'll be really honest, I don't know what to pray sometimes. I don't know what to pray at times for people when, when they're going through hard things. And the reason being is because in my life, sometimes it's been the hard things of my life that have been the things that have changed my life and caused me to become the man, the person who is more submitted to God. And sometimes, sometimes it's hard to pray, God, lift this 
challenge that this person is meeting right now because sometimes that's the very thing that God is using to draw them into his life, into him. Uh, and so, so for me, I always come to God and I say, God, you know this person I'm praying for. You know them through and through. You know the detail of their life. You know their present circumstance. You know their past. You know their future. You know. I just see what I know and what I've experienced with my limited mind. But you know. And so, Lord God, as I pray for them using words that are always limited, see my heart for them, that I want the best for them. Would you, would you Lord God, have your way in their life according to the bigger picture that you see and your love, which is infinite for them. Remember, God sees your heart always. The second aspect of when we pray for someone is that we should always gauge, engage in the praise and the worship of God. What do I mean by the praise and the worship of God? When we praise God, when we worship God, in a sense, we make God bigger. Because what we do is we acknowledge God for who He is. We acknowledge the identity of God, the vastness of God, the magnificence of God. And so when we, when we, when we, when, when we worship God and praise God, and what, how do we do that? By declaring back to God in our words and in our concepts the best we can, who God is, that He is loving, that He is faithful, that He is the Creator, that He is the first. He was never created, God, and God will never end. Is, is when, we, when we worship God, when we come before God and we give God thanks for who He is, the fact that He would even think of us, we make God bigger and greater because it is God that we give this person's life into because God is the one who is the author, the giver and the taker of life and the sustainer of life for all. So, so to praise and worship God is to simply come before God and say, God, this is who you are. And as we acknowledge the greatness of God, uh, we are changed. Um, I also find that the third thing that I find is to look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. See, when I look at what God has done, what happens is my faith is built. When I look back now over the long journey of my life, of all the days and the months, of the hardships and the joys, of the challenges and defeats and the successes and the wonders of what has happened. I, I look back and I can see, as I look back in my life, I can see where God was. I can see where God intervened. I can see where God provided. I can see where God helped me. I can see when I made mistakes and God lifted me up and protected me. I can see and so I can stop and I can say, and you will. With my team only this morning, our staff only this morning, we were, we were uh, sitting and we were talking about the fact that we're so confident that because of what God has done within the ministry, of when we face challenges, what God will do in the future. And so the declaration of what God has done builds our faith to say, I trust my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife, my friend, this circumstance into your hand, because look at who you are. Look at what you have done. And then the fourth aspect of what I found when it comes to praying is to pray specifically and deliberately to place our request before God, to be very specific about as to the degree we understand. It is to come before God and say, this is what I, what I see. This is what I know. This is what needs to be done. Would you come? And God hears the specifics of our prayer. And we read scripture after scripture where people went and said to God, God, this is what I see. Would you do this? And so often God did that and did so much more than what, one the, than what they uh, ever asked. And finally, what I have found, two last things, what I have found is, number, is, is this, 
is that we have to make a statement of trust. And you can say, isn't that worship of God? And it is. But it's to put our, our, our request before God and then to say, God, in you I trust. You're in charge. And a, and a statement of trust, trust actually ultimately comes with a sense of peace within us, that I'm trusting the God who created everything, the God who is over all things, the God who was with us. And finally, we praise God. And what do I mean by praise God? To praise God is to say, you know, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. I trust you. I praise you for your goodness, for your graciousness and for your love. I want to encourage you today as, 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 as you go forth from here, as you pray for people that you love, as uh, these circumstances come within your life, to remember to come before God and to declare to God who He is, just as it was at the party the other day that his wife said, a number of times the wife used his name and said, this is who you are. You are, you are. A number of times, you are. And it was a declaration to him, to herself, to her children, and to everyone present who he is because of what God has done in his life. How much more when it comes to God? I wanna encourage you today to pray, to pray with earnestness, to pray deliberately. And my prayer, is that God will hear your prayer right now. As we finish right now, why don't we pray for all those needs and for all those people that you have and that you're praying for right now. Loving God, we thank You today that You are with us, that You are powerfully among us, that You see us and that You know us. And You know what breaks our heart. You know what concerns us. You know what is important to us. Come, Lord God, to us in this day. Hear our prayers for those we love. We honour you, we adore you, we bless you, we glorify you, for you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the creator of all things. Hear our prayers today. We thank you, we trust you that you have the bigger plan. And we praise you for your goodness, your glory, your magnificence, and that you never leave us alone. Bless us today and bless every life today listening. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. When Rosemary and my children were young, we would go camping next to the ocean at a place a long way from where we lived. And then very early in the morning, I'd get up and I'd go out onto the beach with a very long beach fishing rod and cast into the waves and would catch these fish. And uh, it was great fun. And Joel being just little himself, only four, five, six years old in those years, would come and watch me. Well, now he's 30 years of age and he has his own children who are seven and a half down to 18 months, four children. And he and his wife decided to go camping to the very same campsite. And just as he was leaving, he said to me on the phone, he said, I'd love to go beach fishing one day at the same place that we used to, Dad. We used to take me when I was little. And it just occurred to me when he said it, he wasn't hinting or anything else like that. And uh, I thought, but he doesn't have a fishing rod, so he can't go fishing in the, in the waves like I used to do. And so I said to Rosemary, do you think I could buy him a fishing rod? And she said, well, why not? And so I went down and that day I bought him all the fishing stuff that he needed to go fishing. And then we drove that night all the way to the campsite and we went up to the tent where they were sleeping in and I said hey Joel I've got a present for you and he and his whole family his wife Bridget and the children came out and I gave him this bright white fishing rod this huge rod for him to go he was so shocked and surprised and and the hugs and kisses were just magnificent and when we were driving all the way back Rosemary said to me she said you know what she said uh, you're very much like God the Father right there. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, God loves us so much. He just wants to spoil us. It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. That God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. And, you know, God so loves us. And it was such a joy to me. And I think I feel I got the biggest pleasure out of all of buying the fishing rod and of giving it to Joel and surprising him with it. 
and and it, it really has caused me a lot since I've reflected on that not not doing it for any reason for anyone to know but I did it because I love him and and we living at a time in history where so many people don't know the love of God don't know that they are specifically loved by God and God's love was so great that he sent his son to die for us to make sure that we had access if someone said to me what this ministry is about that's the mission of this ministry to tell people that they are loved by God and that God is there for them and we human parents we love our children don't we and we do things to support them and to love them and to surprise them at times when we can uh, but God our Father wants to give so much more. I want to ask you, would you help me right now to help people know that they are loved by God? There's so much tra uh, trauma and strife in our world today. People need the love of God in their life. That's what this ministry is doing. I call everybody who helps me proclaim the gospel and to tell people about the love of God faith builders because we're building the faith of people. To everybody who gives in a regular way, I call them a faith builder partner. I want to thank so many people who have decided to come and partner with us. You are making a difference in people's lives. And this message is going out all over the world and touching people. I want to thank you for standing with me. And I want to ask you today, right today, would you contribute your very best gift so that we can tell more people that they are loved by God. You can go to this address on the screen or go to the Give tab. And I want you to know that God wants you to know that He loves them and cares for them. Uh, it's just so important that people know the love of God. Thank you for standing with me. Loving God, I thank you today for all those people who are helping us tell the love of God, to tell of your love for people. Lord God, allow us to pierce the hearts of people that they would know that profound love and care that you have for all of us and for them. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing you uh, next time. Uh, God bless you. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.